I'm realizing after so many years that what I have to do to heal is to make these sort of commitments to myself, like that I'm going to be true to myself and that I'm going to really live this life that I have and really seize this opportunity and experience it fully and be here. And that's the first level of commitment. And then there's also that I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do here in life. I'm, I'm going to remain committed to my purpose here, whatever I find that that is, but I, you know, have a sense of what it feels like to me. And then another commitment is that I'm going to work on things that I think are actually worthwhile. I'm not going to sort of prostitute myself to things that I don't think are good. And, um, just other, other commitments about being, you know, listening to my body and, yeah, putting my body as a priority so that if there are other people are having demands on me or whatever, that my body's demands actually count too, and that I can say, well, no, I'm not doing that because I, I need to rest, or I don't feel like that, or I don't, you know. And it's so ironic because I think that I had a sense of all of these commitments a long time ago when I was first getting sick, before I got Lyme, when I just had chronic fatigue syndrome. I think I had a sense of all of this, that I, I was giving up on these commitments, and that, um, it could have been so much easier if all the way back then I had just remade these commitments to myself and I probably could have saved my healing probably would have gone faster because when I got sick I was in a very different state than I am now and even for the first couple years of it there's videos of me back then I was in this state where I mean I was, I was very programmed by my family and I was it's so interesting that I can talk about this now in retrospect, but I was programmed to um, not need anything and, and just to, especially around college, just to be like, okay, I'm going to get by with the minimum possible and I'm going to, even if there's these impossible situations where, you know, I have these mounting health problems, I'm going to try to figure it out so it doesn't cost anything for the family and that um, I'm just going to handle everything on my own and um, do a lot of moves by myself, and, uh, and, and, and then also just this idea that I'm going to just go into, um, this almost makes me cry, like, this is really what made me sick, was what happened to me in college, I, I had all these dreams of going to a top college, and really making the most of my intelligence, and it just really got shattered by probably going to the college that wasn't a great fit, and being pushed through fast, so it's like I came in with all this hope, and I, all that I was hearing was just finish it. <laughs> there was no space for me to have my dreams and to make college what I wanted it to be or to set up the path that I wanted for myself. And I, I went from being really a top, top student to at the end of college. And I was like, what am I going to do for work? I'm incredibly exhausted. I haven't really done any work to set myself up for anything in particular. So anyway, that, that was what made me ill. And it's too bad that I didn't really address that then. I didn't have the skills to address it then, to really turn that around at that time. But, um, you know, I'm turning that around now. It's just kind of my relationship to my career and, and to, you know, making um, making work what I want it to be. So, but anyway, but back to how I was when I first got ill. Like, I was um, just so timid and, and so much about, like... I don't matter, and if there's ever a tension between myself and my own needs and someone else's needs, I would just try to get rid of my needs so that I wouldn't never, never have to ask for somebody else to do a favor. You know, you really just, that was, that was the huge tension, and um, I, uh, I don't know, I, I think I knew what I was passionate about back then, but I didn't see ways to act on it. And um, I hadn't really learned ways that I could have skills and value, like through the internet and through marketing and stuff at that time. And um, so, what's different about me now is that uh, I feel my body a lot more than I used to. I'm much more in my body. I'm much more honest. Um, I have very, very different friendships that are uh, much less about intellectual discussion and much more about you know, kind of people being emotionally open. Um, it's very hard for me to talk to any of my family members and my immediate family um, 
because they're in just such a different world and I, I don't, my world, the way that I've changed doesn't fit into that framework and, and there's a reason why I was the way that I was when I was around them and it was to fit into that framework and now I've had to change out of that and so it's really, really hard for me to relate anymore. And, um, and, you know, maybe people get used to who I am now over time and give me space to be who I am now, but I'm, I'm, I'm still in that process. What else is different now is that, um, I think something that actually makes me very calm and that is really good for me is that I realize that there are just a lot of sort of marketable things that I really like doing and that I could do these for companies and endeavors that I believe in and nonprofit causes that I believe in and that um, you know, being productive in the world and making money can be sort of related to stuff that I like and it's not always going to have to be this thing that I hate of emotional dishonesty. I think that was a lot of what I was afraid about in the world when I was first getting sick. I was like, if I'm not going to be a researcher where it's all about knowledge, I'm, if I'm going to have to be in this business world, like, it just seems like so much dishonesty and so much faking emotions and being like, I'm so passionate about this project, you know, that I'm not passionate about, and I hate doing that, and maybe it's the slight Asperger's, I just hate faking emotions, like, nothing else. So, um, yes, that, that's, that's my video.